you know, one of the big space related stories that we read about in India over the last year was Sunita Williams being stuck in space for nine months. What was your take on that as an astronaut? Because there's very few people who understand what it's actually like being up in space. My question is, what do you think it's like being up there for nine months? We call her Sunny William Sunita. You know, they thought they were prepared to stay, but you kind of think that's that's not likely. You know, it's not likely that you can. Those are those are the rare occasions, but they do happen. But when they happen to you, that you know, you're you're in that situation and you understand why. I think it it really was. Uh, I, I think a tribute to her. She has got such a personality, and um, so I think she made the best of it. She saw it as an opportunity. She she was happy to to um, to to stay there you know and make that adjustment but i think we should also admire her for what she you know what she accomplished that she that she did such a great job and did a bunch of spacewalks and didn't really complain at all and you know it's it's not you know some people say well you know she's in space it's a lot of fun yeah it is but it's really a job that you're doing you know so it's it's uh it's not fun and games it's and it's an adjustment for the family and people at home and you you certainly you know people could certainly get grumpy about doing that but you know she wasn't she didn't do that at all you know and i was in your country i met I met the prime minister when I was there and uh, he was very kind and uh, he was asking about Sonny and he, I think he knew her father at some point and because uh, her parents are from India and he gave me a very wonderful letter to send up to her in space and she really appreciated it. So she has that connection with India. Do you enjoy the food you get up in space or do you get bored of yeah, it? Yes, pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, no, I, I liked Did it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Does it get it's repetitive? Because I'm I'm assuming it's like the same dish that you got to reheat every time. No. Would you want to do that? Would you want to eat the same thing every day? <laughs> you know, astronauts are people. I mean, we're not going to eat that. We're not going to eat, you know. So, no, we had a wide variety of, of things. Uh, you know, we had some vegetarian dishes, some meat dishes, uh, some Italian, uh, all kinds of Indian. You know, you get just about everything up there. And it's prepared by our cooks at, at NASA and uh, packaged. It's just packaged differently than what you would get on the ground so they're packaged in some of them are packaged in these what they call thermal stabilized packets which are kind of like camp food meals ready to eat from the military and you warm those up and eat them some are dehydrated where you just add add water to them so uh no the food's pretty good in fact i did a an endorsement uh for a chicken company uh p foods in uh, thailand was sending their chicken their thai basil chicken to space that's some pretty good food so they had that to eat on that mission i don't know if they've ate i've got to ask peggy if she tried it but uh but no the food is the food's really good no no one wants to go away you know it's important to keep yourself healthy but also for morale so that food's great at least i thought i gained weight in, i'm only one of two astronauts and i know that gained weight. how come most people lose weight well they just they're this, they might lose or they might stabilize you just don't have as much appetite you know you're floating around you might have a little more stomach awareness um and you're busy you're working the whole time you know you're working a lot and so uh, i think generally people don't typically gain weight in space hmm. but i like the food gotcha. so much i did uh do you feel like really tired after the space walks because i assume it takes a lot of physical effort yeah you're pretty drained uh it's a lot of physical effort but it's also a lot of mental effort too i mean you're kind of like locked in thinking about your what you're doing and what's coming next and and uh, so it's, it's also it's physically but also mentally uh pretty draining why, why do you have to exit the ship in the first place i assume it's for repairs maintenance possibly some kind of experimentation yeah uh it was typically to to, to work it's to work on things so like on my flights we were working on the hubble space telescope and uh you can't you know you that that thing is in space so it really wasn't uh practical to try to bring it back down and launch it again you know so you just leave it there and then the only way to work on it is go outside and work on it and um that's the way it was built it was built so we could maintain it that way that's only that's really your only option you can't bring it inside to work on it that's really so you go outside to work and on the space station you know you only have so much room the room inside is really meant for people right and what they need to to work on so um so it's for the experiments and the living life support stuff all that so it's you know you can't you can't have everything inside right and you have like you have some things you have to have out your radiators and your cooling system and a lot of your other equipment is outside so it's kind of like you know in your house or in your apartment or wherever you live there's stuff inside and there's stuff outside and sometimes you you want to do something you know you, you got to go outside to take care of the stuff outside and that's kind of the way it is on the space station a lot of the equipment um outside of outside of the living area and so you got to go outside to work on it every once and sometimes it's to retrieve experiments like that but most of the time it's to um and nowadays it's to it's maintenance tests space station are working properly while you're outside of the spaceship i understand that it's probably a lot of focus that you've got to focus on like you've got to stay in a high focus zone i'm sure but do you also just like kind of turn your head to the side and look out into deep space 
Do you ever get lost in that kind of a moment? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, you know, you uh, you see the beautiful earth here, and you look out, and you look in the other direction. And it's kind of cool. You see stars and stuff like that. You know, every once in a while, you might see a satellite go by. It's kind of cool. But uh, you know, that was the other thing that hit me is that you look out, you know, you look at this beautiful planet, and you look in the other direction, and you know, it's cool and everything. But there's nothing, you know, there's nothing out there yet we know of yet that we could live on. You know, we've checked out the neighborhood. We've got nowhere to go right now. We've got to make our planet work. <laughs> but yeah, you look in the other direction. The stars in space are wonderful, and 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 uh, you you focus on your job but you all you know when you have you have time every once in a while i didn't really look around my i did four spacewalks and the very first one i didn't really look around so much i was just, but after i got more comfortable in my my sequence spacewalks i took more time just to enjoy the environment as best i could make some observations uh, and, and think about how i was feeling about it <laughs>